the 2021 Australian International Architecture Awards are proudly supported by Bluescope, Dulux, Brickworks, Lysart, Fielders, Bondor, Bosch, Built Environment Channel, NBS, Plant Cover and Architecture Media. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Australian International Chapter Architecture Awards. I'm your host, Viv O'Connell, and it's my pleasure to present this, the ninth and the final of the Australian Institute of Architects Chapter Awards announcements. We're streaming live today during NAIDOC week from the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people. And I'd like to begin by paying respect to elders and community as continuing custodians of their rich cultural heritage. And I extend that respect to all First Nations peoples across Australia. Well, it's been quite a year so far. 846 projects have been entered into the main awards categories across all the states and territories and the international awards. And to date, the juries have awarded 277 commendations, awards and named awards. And today, it's all about the work of Australian architects overseas. The international chapter of the Australian Institute of Architects includes some 500 members across 36 countries. And today's awards recognise and celebrate their outstanding contributions through projects that improve the urban fabric of cities and towns, homes and places of learning, and of course, the public realm. We're aiming to cross live to all the award recipients today. So if you're an entrant, please keep an eye out for our call. And what better way to get the announcements underway than with the International Chapter Chair. Samantha Cotterell joins me now, I believe. And I'm afraid that we thought we had Samantha on the line at the last moment, but we don't seem to have been able to connect. So uh, let's just move on. Well, a bit of background before we begin with the announcements. There are three types of acknowledgement in today's awards. Commendations are recognitions of excellence. Awards are bestowed on exemplary work and the international chapter named awards are the highest honour within a category. Each of the award and named award recipients are considered by the national jury for a national architecture award to be announced in early November this year. And that will include the highest honour for Australian international architecture, the Jörn Utzen Award. And so, to set the scene, let's take a look at the recipients of this prestigious award.
well a great overview of the past 14 years of winners of the Jörn Utzen Award there. And we'll begin the announcements with the International Chapter's inaugural Emerging Architect Prize. This is the first year the prize has been awarded in the International Chapter, and the recipient will join the Emerging Architect Prize winners across the states and territories to be considered for the National Emerging Architect Prize. This prize recognises an individual or a collaboration's contribution to architectural practice, education, design excellence and community involvement, advancing the profession's role within the public arena. And so, without any further ado, the 2021 International Chapter Emerging Architect Prize is awarded to Luke Haywood of Atelier Luke. Luke Hayward has successfully established a remarkable international practice between Australia and Japan, producing outstanding work of a unique sensibility, reflecting both cultural influences. The practice is exemplary in the Australian international arena, and the intimate scale of Atelier Luke's projects have been recognised locally and internationally for their design excellence. Through his practice, Luke demonstrates how Australian architects armed with vision, curiosity and courage can step beyond the boundaries and make an outstanding contribution both to their own practice and to the profession at large. Congratulations, Luke Hayward. And I'm absolutely delighted to be joined now by Luke Hayward, our first cross of the show. Congratulations, Luke. Hello, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Now, uh, you're no stranger to the show. We did speak last year when you won an award for House at Demichianagi, I believe. Um, so congratulations now on receiving this award. Can I ask you first, how does it feel? <laughs> uh, it's, it's very overwhelming, especially to hear, hear the little spiel just then. But um, yes, I'm obviously extremely grateful and um, especially after the last 18 months that everyone uh, in the international chapter, I know, has been struggling through both professionally and personally. It's really wonderful to be recognised by the chapter and the institute and gives me a lot of great motivation to persevere and hopefully we'll get to the other side of this disrupted world. Yes, well, here, here on that score, Luke. Um, now, you, of course, have been uh, practising with your practice atelier, Luke, I believe for eight years, is that right, from Osaka and Australia. Um, yes. What is it that you love about practising architecture between these two countries? Um, well, it obviously provides us with a lot of opportunities to work um, with different people and different trades that we wouldn't have the chance to do if we were just in one location. Um, and um, it just provides us with a wonderful kind of lifestyle opportunity as well, which obviously we can't enjoy right now. But um, being able to move between cultures and across borders and take stories and ideas and, and lessons with us to these various different places and take ideas from Japan and put them into Australian projects and vice versa, it's, um, it's very rewarding. And uh, as you mentioned, it's certainly been a disrupted world that architects have been practising in and indeed the whole world has been placed in over the last 18 months. I'm wondering if there's a message that you have for other emerging architects in Australia and those practising overseas? Well, I think especially for everyone overseas, obviously this is the international chapter of the Australian Institute of Architects. So we all have a connection to both Australia and other places, whether that's professional or personal. So I know there's a lot of people uh, that have been going through the same things that we're going through. It's been very hard on a professional and personal level. So I would just say, let's all stick together and, and stick with it. And um, for emerging architects as well, I mean, it's like you said, my, it's hard to believe my practice has been around for eight years now and it's been a lot of struggle, but um, it's worth sticking with it. And uh, again, I'm very grateful to be recognised. And uh, Luke, before I let you go, is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge or thank? Uh, especially like to thank Junko, my wife, who's been very patient with all the challenges and uh, struggles. And she also works with me and has been a great contributor to all uh, the projects. And then beyond that, to my children and family and everyone who've just always been so supportive. Wonderful. Well, uh, Luke, on that note, I might let you go. Congratulations once again on receiving this inaugural Emerging Architect Prize and all the very best with the National Jury's deliberations for their decision later this year. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. You too. Bye. 
And now to the main awards categories, which were assessed by Vui Chung as jury chair, Hank Koning, Wei Yap Ui, Dr Sheila Koneos and Nick Brunston. And we'll be hearing from each of the jurors during the show, but I caught up with jury chair Vui Chong a little earlier from Japan. Vui, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, hi, Viv. Uh, now, obviously, you were this year's jury chair. Um, can you give us a sense of what it was like to be on the international chapter jury this year? First of all, it's an honour uh, to be a jury chair this year. I'm also joined by some really high calibre um, uh, members in the jury panel. Um, they are Dr. Sheila Konejos from Singapore, and we have uh, Nick Brunston, and then I've got Wei Yap Ui, based in Melbourne uh, with Haybor, and also uh, with me in the International Chapter Council is uh, Hank Kuning, principal of Kuning Eisenberg. Excellent, and uh, of course this is the second year we've been live streaming the International Chapter Awards, being able to bring the work of the International Chapter members to a broader audience perhaps than, than would have been the case beforehand. Do you have a message for the International Chapter members watching today, or indeed the members more broadly watching from around Australia? If you're an Australian uh, architect um, base overseas, um, yeah, uh, perhaps it's quite good to actually uh, ne network with the um, international chapter. Uh, yeah, this is so we, um, together we actually help uh, to promote Australian architecture abroad. So if we a great range of entrants obviously this year, do you have any comments on, I guess, the calibre or the, the range of projects that you saw entered in the awards? So uh, this year, uh, although there are quite a small number of projects, but uh, nevertheless, we uh, it is actually quite diverse in um, in categories. So we have um, public projects, and also we have interior, and also surprisingly, we have a heritage ca uh, category as well. So yeah, and there is a growing consciousness in uh, sustainable uh, architecture and the product life cycle. Yeah, so we are we're quite. Um, yeah, yeah, it's quite an honour to, to see all these um, projects coming in. Do you have a message for all of the entrants who've entered the awards this year? Keep up with the good work and con uh, congratulations to all the um, award winners. Fantastic. Well, yeah. thanks so much once again for joining us. All the best in Japan. And uh, hopefully you get to catch up with some of the members in person in the not too distant future. Thanks, Beth. And now to the main announcements. Let's take a look at the first round of nominees in the Residential Architecture Houses New, Interior and Heritage categories. Nassim House, Singapore by Studio Milu. Two connecting residences accommodating four generations within abundant landscaping are designed into a hill slope supported by irregular vertical colonnades, recalling a forest wall. National Museum of Qatar Gift Shop by Koichi Takata Architects. Inspired by Dal al Nisfir or Cave of Light, this project is characterised by undulating cavernous walls. The organic three-dimensional puzzle created by 40,000 individual wooden pieces echoes the architect's vision of bringing nature into architecture and responds to the museum's mission. Heritage meets innovation. And Sir John Monash Centre by Cox Architecture with Williams, Abrahams and Lampros. Although small in stature and hidden from view underneath the elevated French meadow, the Sir John Monash Centre represents the Anzac spirit on the Western Front and is seamlessly integrated into Sir Edwin Lutyens' 1938 Australian National Memorial in Villers Bretonneux. Well, some great projects there, ranging from Singapore to Qatar and France. And before we move on to the first announcement, we have this message from juror Dr. Sheila Conejos. Hi, I am Dr. Sheila Conejos, and I was on the jury this year for the International Architecture Awards. I am currently located in Singapore. It was an honor to be with well-esteemed global architects who are fun and insightful to be with. There is so much synergy during the deliberation process, as well as the entries are all astounding works of architecture, which considers the physical, social, and environmental context. 
Congratulations to all of the winners and entrants this year. Thank you so much, Sheila, for that message. And in the category of interior architecture, the jury have given an award to National Museum of Qatar Gift Shops by Koichi Takada Architects. This project is exquisitely crafted and likely to become a focal point for visitors to the museum. The contoured curves in the space are reminiscent of scenes of an antelope canyon, which the architect explained as the dynamic impermanence of the desert landscape commonly found in Qatar. The double height space with meandering curves creates spectacular scenes which inspires visitors' imaginations. Daylight penetration through the oculus further heightens the sense of awe and allows people to appreciate the craftsmanship of the interior space. Congratulations, Koichi Takada Architects. And I'm delighted to be joined now live by Koichi Takada, who is in Sydney. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, uh, great that you're able to join us today. Now, we heard a little of the jury's citation there. And uh, one of the comments that they made in their longer form citation is that this project was apparently a very long time in the making. Is that true? That's, that's true. Um, it took us almost 10 years, let's, let, let's say. We started off, uh, you know, getting invited to international competition. We were one of six to compete. And uh, eventually we won uh, and then took eight to nine years to realize the project. So it was uh, quite a lengthy uh, project. Uh, and we heard there about the extraordinary craftsmanship and the jury also mentioned the use of sustainable materials and reuse of materials. Was that a part of the client's brief here? Yeah, so if you can imagine in Qatar, I mean, it's desert. When, when I first visited almost, you know, 10 years ago, there was nothing there, no trees especially. So the, the, the form of living trees are such a luxury element. So bringing the part of uh, nature back into this museum is uh, is bringing a life uh, back back into the city, uh, uh, and uh, living materialities uh, is equally a very important element today as opposed to industrial, uh, you know, the hard materialities. Uh, this wood itself is living thing. So we needed to climatize this wood, uh, and then to make sure that this uh, stays in the museum, museum, but it's still sort of living, so moving by millimeters or two, uh, and then we needed to sort of adjust with the expansion joint. Oh, how extraordinary. And uh, do you have a sense of how the client and the public have responded to this project? You know, uh, I was very impressed and uh, moved by people that are actually going to the museum. And as you can imagine, museum is designed by John Nouvelle and his great team. And it museum itself is an incredible experience. But when it comes to this gift shop, it's sort of like a sanctuary within the museum. And because of these living materialities of wood, you smell this wonderful scent of wood, you know, come from nowhere. And then you, you are like, feel like, uh, you know, you're in almost like in a resort somewhere. And, and of course, this was inspired by cave of light and when people go there they just don't want to leave and and that's the sort of the feedback we get and of course as a gift shop it's great because people end up spending more money uh, being being there for longer you know the longer time excellent and uh koichi before i let you go is there anyone that you'd like to acknowledge or thank who was involved in this absolutely extraordinary project yeah look uh, i would like to uh thank aia international chapter and the jury uh, for this uh, great award. I'm, I'm extremely honoured. Uh, my clients, uh, Qatar Museum Authority, uh, led by uh, Sheikha Mayasa, uh, John Nouvelle and, and his team for great architectural vision. Uh, of course, the master carpentry from Rome and his patient, you know, Claudio Di Botto and his team, consultants, and especially my team, past and present. I hope everyone's watching and uh, thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Koichi Takata. Congratulations once again, and uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you so much. And 
in the category of residential architecture, houses, new, the jury have awarded a commendation, which goes to Nassim House, Singapore by Studio Milu. The design of this large multi-generational home works elegantly within the site parameters and responds well to its context. There is a skillful balance of screen and building form which give character and coherency to the complexity of multiple programs. Congratulations, Studio Milu. Moving on to the category of heritage, and we have this message from Jura and joint 2019 gold medal recipient with Julie Eisenberg, Hank Koning. Good evening. I'm Hank Koning, reporting in from Santa Monica, California, where I think it's midnight. I was lucky enough to be uh, one of the jury members this year for the international uh, uh, jury. Uh, and I say lucky because I really enjoy seeing uh, all the submissions, seeing what folks are up to architecturally, uh, and then partaking in the jury discussion, uh, arguing about the philosophical aspects of a uh, location of an entry to a building or the minute detail uh, of a site fence or a guardrail. And in the case of the international awards, where we had an international jury, you also get the, the benefit of hearing about different uh, cultural uh, aspects that then uh, trigger a different architectural response to a project. Uh, I want to thank all those who submitted uh, a project this year and taught me something about architecture. One is never too old to learn something new. Thank God for that, otherwise I'd be bored shitless. And I congratulate all the award winners. Well done. Thanks so much, Hank. And the jury have awarded the International Chapter Named Award for Heritage to Sir John Monash Centre by Cox Architecture with Williams, Abrahams and Lampros. This project has a strong narrative of context, which engages with the pre-existing building, Lutchen's memorial and surrounding landscape. Exceptional skill has been used in working in a highly charged site, thus making the new addition blend well with the existing memorial while revealing its historicity in an interpretive manner. The project provides a sense of place and intimate experience to the public's consciousness and environment. The outcome is a great example of where the best solution is a building that is not seen. Congratulations, Cox Architecture with Williams, Abrahams and Lampros. And Joe Aegis from Cox in Sydney joins me. Joe, congratulations to you and your team on this extraordinary project. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you very much to the jury. It's um, obviously very significant for us and uh, uh, very humbling. Thank you. Yes, and look, this is an incredibly significant project. Um, can I ask Joe, what did it mean to you and the Cox team to be able to work on, on this particular project? Um, well, uh, it meant a great deal to the Cox team and to myself, but also my friends and colleagues, um, Tim Williams and Hector Abraham and John Lambros. Uh, it, uh, it certainly meant a great deal. And one only has to visit that site and feel kind of the emotive power uh, of the place. It's a deeply moving, uh, fraught place and bringing a degree of uh, interpretation and channeling that emotion, I think, or hope, is what we were able to do with the architecture. And uh, the jury made specific mention there of both the complexity and the sensitivity of dealing with this site. Um, can you give us a sense of, I guess, the journey that you went on with your project partners to deliver this exceptional result? Um, it was a relatively quick journey in many ways, but a very long journey in other ways. Um, the Australian government ran an a EOI and then a competition process, and we were lucky enough to win that competition. Um, and then uh, uh, essentially we were on a, you know, on a journey um, in a sense of discovery, because we're designing a building in another country, um, uh, of working with a whole range of, of people 
um, in, in Australia and also uh, in France in uh, delivering the project. Um, local Australian consultants, um, Arat, uh, and others, and also a range of consultants in uh, in France that we uh, we worked with, uh, and and also the critically and most uh, importantly to some extent the exhibition designers Convergence, uh, who we worked with very closely, uh, that they're based in uh, Melbourne. I think given this is a heritage award, I should make special mention of Hector Abrams. Uh, Hector was there with us. Uh, at the competition stage, and a lot of um, a lot of the importance in terms of uh, perhaps this award and heritage is really a deep understanding of the place. Hector uh, uh, um, discovered and uncovered um, a detailed understanding of Luchin's uh, um, plan for the memorial that is in place that we're uh, very much responding to and very much deferential to, uh, but that deep understanding of the place uh, uh, in its physicality, but also in the conceptual thinking behind it. Um, for example, um, there's a controlling Lutchen's geometry across the site. For those of you who are familiar with Lut the work of Lutchen's, uh, it's very much based on three-dimensional uh, three geometry and two-dimensional geometry. And one of our many mantras was that we placed our building inside the controlling geometry of Lutchen. So Hector uh, uh, discovered that um, for us. And um, again, I mentioned Tim. Tim Williams, um, together with Hector, was very much central to developing the conceptual thinking and the understanding of place. Well, uh, the jury was certainly impressed by this project, Joe, and I'm sure everyone who visits it is as well. Um, I'd like to thank you and congratulate you once again on this truly exceptional project and uh, congratulations to all involved once again. Thank you very much and uh, thank you again to the Institute uh, and the jury. And of course, I haven't mentioned our client, um, uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs within the Australian government and particularly uh, Ian, um, Ian Fletcher, who is the uh, project director, together with David Freudeman, the project manager, and of course, Caroline Bartlett, who was the first director of the Sir John Monash Centre. So thank you to all. Wonderful. Thanks again, Joe. And uh, we will be back with the next round of announcements after this message from the principal partner, Blue Scope. by Australia. Thank you, Blue Scope, for your long-standing support of the Institute and, of course, the awards program. Moving on to the next round of categories, urban design and commercial architecture. And to introduce these nominees, I'd like to hand over to juror Nick Brunston. Hi, I'm Nick Brunston. I was on the jury for this year's International Architecture Awards. Uh, I'm currently located in Perth, Western Australia, uh, and we're in the middle of a four day lockdown at the moment, which isn't much fun. Um, I love being on the jury and seeing the quality of architecture being produced by amazing architects all over the world and um, feel really proud to be Australian and see that work being done. Um, so thank you and congratulations to all the entrants. Good luck. Jiang Yin Greenway by BAU Brealey Architects and Urbanists. The design for this four kilometre raised bicycle path goes beyond the brief, including infrastructure for leisure and amenity. The journey is articulated with an amphitheatre, a raised plaza with permanent sound instruments, pavilions and several playgrounds. One and only Desiru Coast, Malaysia by Kerry Hill Architects. 
comprising 46 guest suites, one villa and extensive public areas, this resort creates a unique environment of privacy and calm. Each guest suite features linked bedroom and bathroom pavilions, arranged around a plunge pool and courtyard. And Anantara Ico Mauritius Resort and Villas by Grounds Kent Architects and OGA. Informed by traditional Mauritian architecture, this resort was conceived as a journey through a series of stonewalled courtyards. Block rooms are separated by bridged linkways that create varied and dynamic environments and respond well to the climate. And from this range of nominees, the jury have given an award for commercial architecture to one and only Jezeru Coast Malaysia by Kerry Hill Architects. This well-designed resort captures the genius loci of place with careful integration of architecture within existing vegetation. The main building base is articulated with a carefully restrained and contextually appropriate material palette, which gives it a solid, rustic, yet western appearance, while the rest of the building is clad with simple materials and minimalistic treatment, allowing the plants to dress the building. For a high-end resort, the architecture is not bombastic, but rather modest and elegant. Congratulations, Kerry Hill Architects. And I'm joined now from Singapore by Justin Hill and Angelo Kritsiotsis from Kerry Hill Architects. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Justin, good to see you again. We, of course, chatted last year about your award-winning project, Aman Kyoto, the practice obviously very well regarded in terms of the way its resort design addresses landscape. Um, can you give us a sense of what it was like to work on this extraordinary site? Um, yes, well, it is an extraordinary site. It's an old golf course, and we were we were introduced by Adrian Zecker, the sort of legendary hotel um, uh, person in Southeast Asia about 14 years ago or 15 years ago to um, some fairways on, that ran along the coast on in Desiree, which is in Johor. And it was just amazing when he went on site. It was so quiet and so calm. Desiree was not, was not then a sort of place that you would think that you, you could put a luxury hotel, but we went with it and persevered. Excellent. Well, the jury are clearly very impressed by these efforts. And Angelo, if I can go to you, one of the comments the jurors did make specific mention of was the level of craftsmanship involved in this project. And they made specific mention of the louvers. Um, I'm not sure if you can give us some insights into this side of the project. Well, well it's um, one of the elements we, we use in our, in our architecture. Um, it was a struggle, but... Um, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, quality of workmanship, but we persevered and um, eventually got it right through a lot of uh, mock-ups. <laughs> and can I ask you, Angelo, what do you think has made the project such a success? Uh, it's its place. It's, um, it's, it's situated quite well and hidden from, from the main street. It has a, has a calmness to it that's quite successful. Well, that's certainly something that the jury referenced. And Justin, if I can go back to you, is there anyone that you'd like to acknowledge or thank who was involved in this project? Well, I mean, of course, we have to thank Adrian Zecker and his uh, colleague um, Anil Tadani, who were behind the project in the beginning, and then our client, Kazana National and Malaysia. Thanks, Steph, who drove the project. Um, all the way through the 14 years to get it completed, even though it was COVID, and even though we couldn't get there at times. <laughs> um, um, then all the consultants and our colleagues in Malaysia, thanks Syed and everybody in Malaysia, it was just lovely working with you all. And of course, everybody in Kerry Hill Architects uh, who worked on the project, Terry, who's retired back to Sydney now, who led the interior architecture, um, David, who's moved back to Brisbane, he was he sort of led the early stages of the project with Ranjit, his his colleague, who's moved back to Ahmedabad in India. 
and right through to you know uh, my business partner Angelo and others in the office where there are a lot of people who have worked on this project over the years and our young Ivan you know our Indonesian architect in the office like Tenemakasi Ivan he's now working on phase two of the project so he's been a great support so it's all about the team um, at KHA and we have a good team and They've seen it. We seem to attract projects which run sometimes through several decades, and this has been a sort of decade and a half. This one, so I'm glad we sort of pulled it through in the end, and I'm glad the jury um, uh, liked it. Thank you very much to the jury, of course, and thanks to the International Chapter Council and their jury and their perseverance with these awards. They mean a lot to everybody out there. Oh, well, well said, uh, Justin and Angelo. Any comments from you before I let you both go and enjoy the rest of the day? No, I think uh, Justin's pretty much covered it. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're, we're thrilled. We're thrilled. <laughs> Good we're to very hear. Very happy. Good to hear. Well, uh, I do hope uh, you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Bye, everybody. And before we move on to the final categories, education and public architecture, we have this message from Jura Wei Yap Ui. Hi all, I'm Wei from Haber and I'm currently located in Melbourne. I was on the jury this year for the International Architecture Awards. What I've enjoyed about being on the jury is to witness the influence and quality of work Australian architects has accomplished internationally. Congratulations to all the entrants and winners for doing high quality work and as a robust contributor to the world of architecture beyond our shore. Congratulations again. Venus Campus Malang by Denton Corker Marshall Jakarta, Duta Chermat Mandiri. Surrounded by volcanoes and old temples, this project is inspired by the spirit of the land and the ancient world. The composition mimics the surrounding hills and new temples of learning in modern East Javanese culture through shapes and materials and roofs decorated with grass and mature trees. Bean Dean Convention Centre, BDCC, Key Known by Studio Milou. This 1,200-seat theatre, large multifunction and exhibition space with meeting and dining rooms, uses almost exclusively local materials and sits well within the grandeur of its urban and natural surrounds. Sir John Monash Centre by Cox Architecture with Williams, Abrahams and Lampros. Carefully placed within its site geometry, the building is physically connected to the memorial via a pair of ramps which descend into the sombre foyer, while the key feature of the interior is a circular immersive gallery built of Australian timbers that represent all states and territories. Tini Cow Hospital and Health Centre by Jacobs with CCM Architects. Located in a remote area of New Zealand, the new three-storey building straddles the escarpment, offering stunning views and natural daylight into the interior, while progressive approaches to integrated healthcare have been translated into forward-looking design solutions. And Buko Community Centre by BAU Brealey Architects and Urbanists. This project aspires to create a moment of social and urban vitality to this modernist district, with a collection of mixed programs including Active Edge Retail, a 104-room hotel, office spaces, preschool and a community centre. Well, five great projects in educational and public architecture. And thanks for that message, Way. And the jury have awarded a commendation for public architecture to Bean Dean Convention Centre, key known by Studio Milou. Located in the only long yet small strip of urban lung, 
This project is the first public building in Vietnam that was not gated or fenced. Strong public gesture, integration of civic functions, private spatial sequence and multiple entry points are factors that contributed to the success of this project. Congratulations once again to Studio Milou. And the final announcement for the awards. The Award for Public Architecture goes to Sir John Monash Centre by Cox Architecture with Williams, Abrahams and Lampros. The Sir John Monash Centre captures the ambition of the brief with a clear core idea and philosophy. The clarity of the structural expressionism and high attention to interior details is a demonstration of the project's ability to translate the brief as a successful work of public architecture. The diagonal shaped roof slab allows the structure to have less columns, therefore allowing flexibility in accommodating the exhibition contents while the burying of much of the program is highly successful and creates a powerful and heightened spatial experience. Congratulations once again to Cox Architecture with Williams, Abrahams and Lampros. And Joe Ages joins me once again. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, again, um, it, an incredibly uh, humbling honour. So thank you to the jury and um, the Institute of Architects. Uh, well, I did feel bad cutting you so much short on the previous cross, trying to save a little bit of material for our conversation now. But um, I'm not sure. Uh, if, perhaps if you'd like to start by commenting on, I guess, what you hope the, the long term legacy and impact of this project will be. Um, it, the word legacy is interesting. The client um, always termed it a legacy project, meaning um, you know it has a life of 100, 200 years, etc. Um, and I think part of the aspiration um, of the Australian Government and Department of Veterans Affairs was that the stories uh, of the um, of the place and, of course, of the horrors of the war and the suffering and the pain, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the experiences were told and retold to the next generation and the generation after that coming through. Um, it, World War I, as horrific as it was, was transformative for the young country, Australia. If you look at Australia before World War I and you look at it afterwards, um, it was wholly transformative. Um, and telling that story. And interestingly, I think, again, um, uh, thank Convergence for this, the exhibition designers, but the stories are told in three languages. Um, uh, so it's not only a story to be told to Australians, but a story, uh, an Australian story to be told to a European uh, audience. And in particular, uh, a, school children, European school children. Um, so telling those stories, that Australian experience uh, on the Western Front um, into the long term, in a sense, uh, is the legacy or certainly the intent of our client. And uh, Joe, was there anyone that uh, you'd like to acknowledge? I know that you listed some of obviously your collaborators, the client representatives as well in our last conversation, but was there anyone else that you'd like, you'd like to acknowledge? Um, I, I think beyond everyone that I, I acknowledged last time, mm -hmm. and I know Tim would like me to acknowledge this, to the people of France, uh, and in particular the people uh, in the districts and the mayors for their support. Uh, I know it's um, this project has been close to their heart, uh, as it has to us, so thank you to them. Excellent. Well, look, uh, Joe. congratulations once again to you and, and everyone involved. Um, I also think you're winning my award this year for the person I have crossed live to most in the chapter awards announcements. So thank you very much for your words again this afternoon. Thank you. And you, you may note that I'm holding my phone at the moment. So in the end, uh, my laptop kind of failed and um, if there's any Cox IT people looking, it's about time I get a new laptop, I think. <laughs> well, uh, I think you might get some action on that request now, Joe. Um, <laughs> I'll give your arm a rest and leave you to enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody. And, and congratulations to all the other award winners and indeed all the award, all the projects that were shown today, quite exceptional. And I think, um, interestingly, just in closing, there's a, an irony in that we're talking about international awards in our current uh, circumstance. Uh, and hopefully that Australian engagement outwards, um, once we get over this pandemic, can be kind of renewed and enriched. So thank you. Hear, hear, Joe. Thanks for those words. And uh, as we begin to wrap up the awards announcements today, let's just take a quick recap look at some of the member messages that have come through in the last five weeks. What are you? Profi. Hi. We're Profi. We're Profi. We're Cameron from Nickel. Hello, we're Borgrove Architects. We're Bruce Collective. We're Core Collective Architects. Hello. This is Honeyford Architecture. Where is the Hi, we're Archie. We love Nate Russell Architects. And we love dogs. And we're watching Lassie. I mean, you're watching the AIA Awards. You're watching the National Chapter Architecture Awards. Awards. <laughs> And that brings the Australian Institute of Architects Chapter Awards announcements to a close. But save the date for the National Architecture Awards being live streamed on the 4th of November this year. In the meantime, if you'd like to catch up on any of the nine live streams in this series, they're all on the Institute's YouTube channel. We also encourage you to browse through all the projects entered in today's awards on the Institute's website and cast your vote in the People's Choice by the 31st of July. You'll find the details in the description box below. And keep an eye out on the International Chapter's Instagram for the winner of that competition. I'd like to congratulate all the award recipients and indeed all the award entrants this year. It's been an absolute pleasure to be able to showcase and share the exemplary work of the Institute's members once again. I'd also like to thank the Institute's corporate partners for their support and in particular principal partner Bluescope. Thank you once again for joining me for the International Chapter Architecture Awards and indeed all the Chapter Awards. It's been a pleasure to be your host. I hope to see you again soon. The 2021 Australian International Architecture Awards are proudly supported by Bluescope, Dulux, Brickworks, Lysart, Fielders, Bondor, Bosch, Built Environment Channel, NBS, Plant Cover and Architecture Media. <laughs>